So I've been looking for a good quality chopper for a little while now because out of my entire knife collection, that is one knife I don't have. I have a couple cheapies, but nothing of good quality, nothing to be proud of, and definitely nothing I'd want to take into any real survival situations. Now, I had my eye on a couple different ones. I'll, I'll We'll talk about those here in a second, and I'll put the name of this maker down at the bottom of the screen. I have not seen anything from this maker on YouTube. I haven't seen anybody talking about them. This did come from Polish Custom Knives, where he has tons of his work on their site. Um, I will link them down in the description, but this thing is everything I could have ever wanted in a chopper. It is an absolute behemoth. It's a beast. The blade is a quarter inch thick O2 tool steel or Bowler K 720, which is a very high toughness steel with great wear resistance, but with low corrosion resistance. So, you know, that's the one downfall. Now it's coated, so I'm not really worried about it. And to be honest, even after I really, really use it hard and the coating starts to wear off, I'm still not worried about the corrosion resistance. I have lightly used it, but this is a knife that I, I really want to test and sharpen and really see how this heat treatment feels. The handle is gorgeous micarta, and this thing is so, so comfortable in the hand. The blade shape is a harpoon straight back. I love this swedge with a light recurve. Now, what's cool about this recurve is you're going to get the benefits of the recurve, but when sharpening it, you're going to be able to sharpen it either on a stone or, you know, any way you want to, really. This thing will sharpen up because the recurve is so long that it's not going to matter. You're not going to have the struggles with having to use a round stone or anything like that. And, you know, the, the weight of it and the size of it is perfect. So you're getting, you know, a lot of power in this front end when you swing it. The handle is nice and comfortable so you don't feel any, you know, any, um, what's it called? You don't feel any vibrations or anything like that in your hand that make it, you know, make it painful to swing. Now, I seen another one that was very similar to this, except for it was a harpoon drop point. And it had a little bit more of an elongated uh, front end or tip. Now, I know this one will chop much better than that one, or at least, you know, it, it probably would because of the nose being a little bit bigger, but that one definitely is catching my eye as well. Now, the other two that I was looking at when I was looking at this one, I still have my eye on, and I, I still really like, and after getting this one in the hand, man, it just makes me like them even more, uh, but if any of you guys wind up buying one of these two knives, uh, please get a hold of me. I would love to hear what you guys think about them, uh, because, you know, I haven't tried these other two, but they look really, really cool. Now, also, if any of you guys have tried any of this guy's work, let me know, because I'd love to hear your guys' uh, feedback or, you know, experience with his work. Now, I still have to do some good testing on this, some sharpening, you know, and really see how his heat treatment feels and all that good stuff. But my goodness, am I happy right off the bat. This thing is an absolute badass knife. It kind of reminds me of the Predator knife or something from the original movie. So this is a handmade leather sheath, but he also has Kydex sheaths because he has all different kinds of knives. He has big knives, small knives, hunting knives, tactical knives, all different kinds of knives that he makes. So, you know, there, there's a lot to choose from. Um, this one obviously came with the leather sheath, which is really cool. I usually prefer Kydex, but I'm sure I wouldn't have any issues with getting a Kydex sheath made for this. Um, regardless, this is a good sheath. I'm very happy with it. I like it. And um, yeah, this is definitely one that uh, I I'm going to enjoy testing. So stay tuned for that in the near future. So the next knife is the Wii Murata. A knife that I, besides, you know, when they, it first dropped, I haven't really heard anybody say too much about it. Um, I think, you know, because it only is a flipper, that might be the reason, but it is a phenomenal flipper. Um, another thing is, is a, it's a limited edition. So like this one is number two, or sorry, 125 out of 200. So there is, you know, 200 made of each version, you know, of each finish or color. Um, it's very comfortable in the hand. It is a straight back with a clipped nose. 
kind of like the Herman Ishtar in a way. So you can still get down to utility cuts and be great for self-defense or poking. The action is ridiculous. It's got a hand satin finish on it, 20 CV steel. This one has the tiger stripe titanium that follows around the backspacer and on the pocket clip. Hidden lanyard pin back here, titanium hardware all the way around. Phenomenal flipping action. But yeah, this is a really cool one. And I'm just, I haven't seen much about it, even though it is a, a badass knife. Um, another one from Wii and the last one from Wii. This is the new, and I know this one's kind of new, so that's why everybody hasn't been screaming about it. This is the Tashi Baruka, what, Speedline? And it's a Tashi Baruka. That's the thing. These, this design, I think you either are going to love it or not. Um, he's been a very popular knife designer. Um, before I even got into the knife community, he was super popular. So, you know, you can really see his design influence on this. These holes, you know, kind of add to the weight relieving, but also to the aesthetics that's, you know, pretty cool. It's kind of like holding a pistol in the hand and it's very straight lined. Like this is a perfect straight line from here to here. So, you know, for, for uh, plunging it into something or for thrusting, whatever, you can generate a lot of power with this one. Good access to the liner. Very smooth on the drop. Good flipping action, great detent. I also can reverse flick it. Uh, the blade is a straight back and 20 CV steel, carbon fiber and titanium. And you see how it's kind of, you know, put together here. It looks really cool. I love how they put that together. Titanium pocket clip. And yeah, just a really cool one. I, and like I said, I know this one's new. That's why, it, you know, it hasn't been talked about much because it is still brand new. Next is... A knife from DEFCON. Now, I've only seen this, I think, on one other video aside from my own channel. And this is, in my opinion, the best DEFCON knife that I've tried. And I have about four of them. And all of them are good. I like them all. At least most of them. There's one I'm not that big of a fan of, but it's just because it's so tiny. But all the rest of them are great. Because that one was Kara's. But anyways, all the rest of them are great. But this one is by far the best quality quality one has the most the, the best detent the best braking action um the the best sound ergonomics just all the way around now it has an m390 blade and they did have their um m390 tested at one point and it tested really good uh surprisingly uh because you know a lot of companies kind of you know slack in that area it has a timascus pivot collar on both sides then it has these, these Timascus balls that are screwed in from the inside, so you could technically remove them and replace them with something else if you wanted to. You know, if you like to make your own stuff for your own knives or whatever, you can make it unique to you. TA hardware all the way around, lots of hardware too. Very strong construction the way it is built, and it is a very, very solid knife um, with in insane action. The reverse flick is amazing. It's equally as good for the thumb. And then the flipper tab, you, you wouldn't expect it to be such a good flipper because the flipper almost looks like it's a little too low. But damn it, it is good. It has a glass breaker in the back right here. Now that's the one downfalls in the hand if you put, put it right here in your palm and you flip it. You feel that glass breaker. But it's also very easy to just let it roll right out right there without poking you. And that's kind of what I do. It's got the forward finger twill so you can choke up. Because of the handle shape, the pinch grip is great on this knife. You know, you feel real like you have tons of control like this. Yeah, this is a cool one. My biggest complaint, you know, is just all the logos, all the branding. I'm not a big fan of that. That that makes it it makes it look cheaper. Um, they should make this smaller. Get rid of the DEFCON. Just use the logo. Get rid of all this stuff on the sides. Just leave the steel. You don't need all that billboarding. There's no reason. It, it makes it look like a gas station knife. Not saying it does look like that because, you know, there's a lot of really good quality knives. I could name a dozen companies right now that are very premium companies that do the same thing. But I do think we should try to encourage companies to get away from doing that. You have spots for tritium inserts, which is also, you know, really cool. DEFCON. 
Icon Knives has, you know, a few knife models that uh, that do that. One of these days, I'm going to pick up some tritium inserts to put in some of these knives. Next is another Keto knife. I showed one in yesterday's video. This one is the Nelson. Now, this one is available. Right now, I can link it. The other one was available, too, but I couldn't link it. This one, I absolutely can. And it's actually really cool. Now... I wasn't a huge fan of it at first, and the reason why was just because of this fuller. Because I was looking at this fuller, and yeah, yeah, it works, but it's slippery. So, I didn't like it because it was slippery. Now, technically, I could up inside that hole with some sandpaper and make it super grippy. But, I just don't even consider it. It's just kind of a stylish thing. And if I wanted to do it, yes, I can, but it's not something enjoyable. The flipper tab works great, though. So I'm very happy with the flipping action. And then the blade shape with this sheep's foot blade. And then it's got this, I don't even, I don't even want to call it a bead blast. This is such a finely blasted finish. Look at this. It's almost like a mirror. I mean, it is crazy how fine this blast is. I don't know if this is like a like a three-day glass blasted finish or something. I can actually see myself if I really you don't know, want to. I mean, it is very reflective. Let's see if you guys can see yourselves. Yeah, I see that. Kind of. There I am. Peace. Anyways, it does come in different versions. It is a titanium frame lock with a titanium milk pocket clip and backspacer. Nice texturing on the backspacer. Um, you know, the access to the lock bar is okay. It's not, you know, great, but, it, you know, it's good. Um, not something I would, you know, give it a check mark against. Uh, comfort in the hand, pretty decent. Not uh, not uncomfortable at all. And, you know, it's just a, a nice little EDC knife. And I think that if it speaks to you and you're not worried about, you know, it not being a reverse flicker, because a lot of people don't care about that. A lot of people just like a good flipper, you know, and a good flippers are, are very popular still. So, um, you know, you might want to check this one out. Now, I know I rave about this one all the time, but I'm just letting you guys know the satin versions of the Rex 45 GP exclusive Manix has dropped. So if you're wanting to get one, you just didn't like the blacked out blade, now they have satin versions. Um, in my opinion, this is one of, if not the best USA made knife, one of the best knives period ever made. Um, and with this lightweight version, man, it's incredible how solid and how strong this thing is. Um, you know, just in, Everything. It has literally everything, in my opinion. Now, the Rex 45, I am absolutely loving Rex 45. I'm definitely putting it into my top five favorite steels list. Um, you know, I, I'm actually kind of disappointed in myself for not getting more experience with it before now. You know, I had a couple times, but not like I do now. And I'm definitely probably putting it like right next to K390 or at least very close. I am loving it. But anyways, yeah, the, the GP Knives exclusive Manix is linked down in the description. So the next one is one I have not seen on anybody else's channel, but mine and Stasa 23s. Maybe other people have featured it and I just don't know, but... Ever since I got this, I talked about how great this is. This, to me, is such a useful knife. And then look at this fuller. And it's so easy to flick. This is a sleek, slim, uh, phenomenal user. I mean, it's just, it's you don't have to get the Damascus version. This one does have the Damascus, which actually looks pretty good. And Concept does a good job with it. It has a sheep's foot blade. Beautiful swedge on the front nose of that sheep's foot. Um, good geometry. This one has the micarta. I think they might have stopped doing this micarta because of the cracking issues around the pivot. Uh, so you're not going to have to worry about that. But all in all, man, phenomenal detent, phenomenal flipping action, great reverse flick. You know, very easy to flick this fuller. Um, especially for such a slim knife, you don't expect it to be just like such a uh, um, a easy knife to flick, but also satisfying. Good access to the lock bar concept usually does a good job with that. Not always, but usually. Um, it has a titanium milled pocket clip that's sleek and slim. One standoff, very minimal. And, or no, sorry, two standoffs. It has a lanyard pin and a standoff. Um, but it is a full-size knife while being sleek, slim, and, and very easy to carry. You'd never even know this was in your pocket. Uh, yeah, this is awesome. And there, oh yeah, by the way, the... Um, 
The blade steel is a, um, I think a 10, it's the 10 CR Damascus, but in this case, I know they do a good job with it. I've tested Concepts Damascus and, you know, the titanium frame lock is really well done. The inlay work is done very well. It comes in, you know, a few different color options. But yeah, personally, this is one I dig quite a bit. You know, from the action, the smoothness, that reverse flick, the slimness, the sleekness, the sliciness. It, it has a lot going for it. And it has like a nice futuristic look. Another one I haven't seen very much is the Acaso Solstice. Now this is an Andrew Demko design and it is made in Taiwan with S35VN. Comes in three different blade shapes, a straight back, a worn cliff, and then a harpoon. It has titanium scales. The pivot has the Akaso logo, as you can see. And it, you know, the deep carry clip is reversible. It actually has a place underneath the, the, the clip that you know has the cutout for it to be inserted in. Good access to the lock bar, very smooth on the drop, phenomenal detent. They did a really good job. I have a, a few of these. I have every blade shape. All of them came with phenomenal action. So whether you're doing a light switch or a push button, because this is such a comfortable flipper tab, you can really load up. Yeah, great breaking detent. And yeah, it's just a slim, sleek, you know, knife. It's something that's going to be very easy for most people to carry. It's definitely not what you normally expect from Andrew Demko, uh, but it, it is very well done. It does have steel liners, and I know people haven't gravitated towards it too much because of the price tag. The price tag is up there. Lockup is nice and strong, too. I have spine whacked it. It's rock solid. But a lot of people, I don't think, like the price, which I understand. The price is a little bit high for this model, but a lot of people compare it to the CEO, the CRKT CEO. However, if the CEO was made in Taiwan with these materials, it would be even more money than this. So, anyways, um, it's a cool little knife, though. And like I said, it comes in multiple different versions. Next is... The Fox F8. This is one I thought was going to be much more popular than it wound up being um, because it is actually a really, really awesome knife. It's very well done. Now, it's using M398 steel, which is somewhat of an exotic steel. It's a super steel. You rarely see it, but it's made in Italy. So this knife is made in Italy, and so the downfall to that is that they do run their steel soft. Uh, so yes, the M398 is ran on the softer side. Now, I don't think anybody's buying this to be their workhorse or anything, but you know, you still like to know that your your steel has, you know, the proper HRC and heat treatment. You know, I, I know it'll still hold an edge really well, but nowhere near what it could if it had a harder HRC. Now, the action is ridiculous. Uh, very, very good action. The the even just the ergonomics, the grip, grabbing it, grabbing it, you know, the whole so, so well placed, whether you're doing the thumb flick. Or the reverse flick. Both of them are equally as good. Very comfortable ergonomics. I love how the blade kind of aims at whatever you're cutting. It's kind of, in my opinion, reminds me of a premium nightshade from Vostede. Deep carry clip that is reversible. These are titanium scales, but it does have steel liners. So it has a steel liner lock. Um, big ceramic detent ball. And that's what where you get this good action from. Uh... But yeah, all in all, super solid knife. And like I said, I really dig the knife. Um, you know, I just, I honestly, just like most people probably, I wish the HRC was a little bit higher, but that doesn't stop me from absolutely digging the knife. Uh, the geometry is decent. It's not like super slicey. It's not crazy robust, but you know, it's a little bit on the tougher side, um, probably because this isn't a super tough steel. But anyways, it's an awesome knife, and I just I have not seen it ever since it first came out, and everybody was raving about it. They kind of stopped talking about it after that. Um, yeah. So I want to close this video out with a couple affordable knives, and I know this one's been talked about, but this is the Kershaw Iridium. Now, it is, in my opinion, Kershaw's best best manual knife in a long time. Um, now, it is an overseas made knife. I wish they would do something like this in the States or in the US, but you know, it is what it is. But it's got a great aluminum handle all the way around, even the backspacer. 
D2 steel, but there is other versions now too, by the way. I'll link everything I can down in the description. Deep carry clip that's inset with flat screws and reversible. And the action is redonkulous. This was the first time Kershaw used a crossbar lock and they did a damn good job with it. Uh, beautiful blade shape. I love that blade shape, you know, because there's no flipper tab, the ergonomics are great. Uh, now, I didn't rave about this one over the year after I got it because mine has play that I can't get rid of. However, I, you know, I was one of the first ones to get it and I've talked to a bunch of people that ha don't have that issue. So it might be just mine. If you have the that same issue, let me know. But it hasn't gotten, it hasn't been weak. There's nothing wrong with it. It just has a little bit of play in the pivot. Is it that big of a deal? Probably not. Maybe, you know, I, I looked a little too hard at that. Of course, I want a solid knife. You know, there's so many knives out there that are super solid, but I think that if you bought one, yours will be just fine. Yours will be solid, you know. Like I said, I was one of the first ones to get it. Next is, now this next one is another affordable knife, and I've been saying that this thing was super awesome since it first dropped. This is the Suncut Bakel 2, and it's a simple knife, very simple, and that's what's awesome about it is its simplicity. Great flipping action, super thin spear point blade, and then this handle is the perfect size for you to pinch grip, and then you have all this blade hanging out, you know. Even the handle, you know, for how you know compact and small it is, you can get a comfortable full grip, you know, for if you need to, you know, do some slicing. Good access to lock bar. Ceramic caged bearings, very, very smooth. It has a deep carry inset clip with flat screws, not reversible. And the clip does not like drive me nuts. Normally when a, a handle thins out like this, this would drive me nuts, but it's weird. It just it fits right in like the pocket of your hand. Um, D2 steel, so you know, like I said, it's a very affordable knife, but man, oh man, is this a great gift knife or just a great little gent knife for anybody, you know, just wanting an affordable piece. Um, this is definitely one I would recommend to gift. Another one, just really quick, because you know, kind of similar, this is the Sencut Jubal, and yes, it is, you know, it's very similar size, just, you know, with a worn cliff blade and a front flipper. So if you don't like regular flippers and you want to, you know, kind of get something a little bit more modern, which not that flippers aren't modern because they are, the front flipper works great on the Jubal. It is very compact though, so it is very slim. Civivi has the Clavi, which is basically an elongated version of this. Um, I actually do have one that I'm going to be giving away pretty soon. But very thin geometry again, very small handle, but it's a handle that you can get a good grip on in the pinch grip again. The handle's a little bit longer than the other one, but you absolutely can still, you know, do these pinch grip motions. And the blade steel on this one's also D2. I like how the blade kind of hides itself in the handle. And also, I like how they didn't do a deep carry clip on this one. Because, like I was saying about the other one, you know, it had the potential to be uncomfortable in the hand. Because it's not a deep carry clip, you know, it's comfortable in the hand. And it'll be easy to get in and out of the pocket. These clips work great. So, awesome little knife, man. And, you know, they always come in different colors and stuff. Next is the Best Tech Man Mini Dundee or Little Dundee. Now, there is a big version of this, hence the little part. <laughs> um, but the thing is, is I actually like this one more than the big one, which is pretty surprising. I don't know if they just refined it a little bit more. I'm pretty sure I was able to reverse flick the bigger one off of this little fuller. Um, not that it was super easy, but this one is... To me, personally, it just it feels more refined, and the flipper tab on both of them is so comfortable. Phenomenal flipper tab with a great detent. Super smooth on the drop, especially for such a little light blade, and to me, this is a good-looking knife. I think that this is, it's simple, it's sleek, but damn it, it's a good-looking knife. I love how the clip matches the blade and the pivot. You know, with the liners, it does have inset steel liners, good access to the lock bar. You can hear it when the detent pulls it back in. Um, ceramic caged bearings. It is D2 steel, you know, and that's why, you know, they're able to keep it on such a low budget, you know, as far as affordability. But man, oh man, this is a lightweight, very capable, awesome little knife. Definitely a great 
kind of a gent knife, but but a, definitely a great gift knife you could give to somebody or or even carry yourself because for most people, this would be a full size knife. Now to me, this is a medium size knife, but like I said, I like it better than the big one. Um, yeah, yeah I, I love it. Um, I think they did a really good job on this one. So anyways, there you guys go. Work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.